Dagon Aweda was born of a virgin in the Huron settlement. At his birth, the messenger came, saying, One day this boy will bring forth the good news of peace and power. When Dagon Aweda came of age, he built a canoe of stone and went in search of the council smoke. It is my business to stop the shedding of blood among humans, he said, and took off swiftly across Lake Ontario to meet the Iroquois. He saw no smoke at their settlement, but came ashore. Finding some hunters, he bid them to tell their chief, I am Dagon Aweda. I bring the good news of peace and power. Dagon Aweda returned to his stone canoe and continued east, while the hunters spoke to their chief. It is a good message, the chief said, if we can get the people to believe it. As Dagon Aweda continued east, he found that men did desire peace. One day he arrived at a house. Over dinner he shared his message. She told him, I like it, but how will this message end wars? Dagon Aweda replied, We will build a long house in which a fire will burn for each nation, and where matters can be resolved peacefully. She said the message is good, but it will not be good unless it's practiced. Seeing the woman's wisdom, Dagon Aweda named her new face, the mother of nations, the one who would name the chiefs. With this, Dagon Aweda continued eastward until he arrived at the house of a man who eats humans. He waited on this man's roof until he came home with a human body in a kettle. As the man looked into the boiling water, he was shocked to see the reflection of a wise man. Suddenly, the cannibal realized, I must not eat humans. But realizing this, he did not know what now to do. He came outside to find Dagon Aweda. Heal your past by practicing truth and justice. Help me spread the good news of peace and power. The man agreed. They ate deer together, the flesh of the heavens, and then Dagon Aweda named the man Hiawatha. Dagon Aweda told Hiawatha, Visit Atotoro, the evil wizard with snakes for hair. Tell him of the great peace. He will chase you away, but persist, and we will prevail. Dagon Aweda went first, telling the wizard, When men accept the, the law of peace, war will end. The wizard laughed. Dagon Aweda told him, Hiawatha and I will comb the snakes out of your hair. Dagon Aweda left, trudging east, met a mohawk, and told him the good news of peace and power. The man said, There is no peace here. Show our chiefs a sign, and we will accept it. Dagon Aweda agreed to climb to the top of a tree, and if he survived the fall, it would be taken as a good sign. So he climbed, the tree was cut, and he was nowhere to be found. But the next sunrise he returned. The chiefs doubted him no more, agreeing to unite and join the council fire. But the Onondagas remained split. Hiawatha had come to move a Totoro, but he remained unmovable. In anger he had killed Hiawatha's three daughters. Hiawatha was so distraught, he left, going south, to the Tolly Lakes, crossing on the backs of ducks, and picking up three shells, he threaded them, built a fire, and said, Let these shells console me, the strings become words to lift this darkness. For twenty-three days he wandered, eventually finding himself by the lower falls where Dagon Aweda found him. Hearing Hiawatha's grief, he said, I wipe away thy tears, I make the daylight, I identify the sky. Knowing he was heard, Hiawatha's grief was lifted. Now that your reason has returned, let us both advance the laws of peace that will end war. And so they went, gathering the chiefs of the Oneida, Cayuga, Seneca, and Mohawk to confront a Totoro. Your mind is twisted, Dagon Aweda told him. We come together to build a house of peace, where we shall live under one roof as a family with five fires, one for each nation. We shall plant the great tree of peace here so its roots extend and protect all of mankind. Your dreamer, Atotoro said. Hiawatha said, You are strong, but in council your voice will be heard by all, and we will be a united people. When Hiawatha said this, Atotoro's hair was straightened. Antlers were then placed on the heads of the chiefs, and they were all given the words of law. This was how the Iroquois Confederacy came to be.